Hello and welcome back to 90 Day Dental Day 56. So, third part on special care dentistry today with Natalie. But before we kick into that, just having a bit of a reminder and a reminiscence of the last few months as the dental world prepares to get back to normality tomorrow and start the journey back to work. It's been a fantastic couple of months for a lot of us staying safety wise but also in terms of time with our loved ones. And it's an opportunity for us to reminisce about that and really enjoy these moments before we start to get back to normality. So I'm hoping all of us have managed to benefit from this time. We've managed to take it in and really mentally prepare ourselves for going back out there, which will be hard work for everyone across the world, but including the dental profession in the UK, especially. Enjoy with Natalie. Hi everyone and welcome to day three of Special Care 90 Day Dental where I'm going to be talking about what I get up to as a special care registrar. So generally if you refer on to a special care um, as a specialist or community dental services they might be seen in community, they might be seen in hospital and they might be seen by a whole range of team of the team. So we have in our service therapists, we have dentists, dental officers and we also have specialists and consultants. And so depending on what the treatment plan is for that patient and the needs for that patient, they might be seen by a whole team. We also have input from medical specialties too, which is really important for many of our patients, as well as input from learned disability nurses, speech and language therapists, and, and generally a huge remit of medical team. So when we treat special care dental patients, we have lots of facilities that we can offer them that you can't as a general dental practitioner. So if a patient is housebound, we can go out to see them at home on a dom. Since 2006 changing contracts, um, the only dentists who can provide domiciliary treatment under the NHS are those who hold domiciliary contracts, which generally falls under the CDS. And um, so we will go to the patients who can't get to clinic. This might be because they're agoraphobic, it might be because they have um, physical disabilities that they can't get out of the house. Um, and it's quite fun really. Um, in terms of what treatment we can provide on a DOM, it really varies on the service and what equipment we have. Uh, generally, his, traditionally, it's mainly a denture and screening service. But you can also provide some restorative treatment using um, ART, or some services have carousel, for example. Or you can even get mobile dental um, drills and suction, so you can do a full filling or composite on somebody at home. We also have a mobile dental x-ray, so we could technically take x-rays on patients who are at home and that might help you in terms of deciding whether you might take a tooth out or not. I have taken teeth out on patients at home. I have actually done a full lower clearance for someone once, but they were very goofy mobile and uh, very straightforward. <laughs> so the important thing with domiciliary care is risk assessing appropriately because you're going into somebody else's home, a non-clinical environment, what happens if, you, if things go wrong. So we have to take a lot of equipment with us and, and that's also a barrier for some, for some dentists wanting to take up these contracts because you need to take things like a defib out with you, oxygen, there's a lot of equipment. For patients who have physical disabilities but can get to clinic, we also have additional equipment that can help. So if they can't physically get into our dental chair, it, we have hoists that are literally take the patient out of their chair and into the dental chair. Um, we also might have wheelchair tippers um, so I work in two places with wheelchair tippers, or three places with wheelchair tippers. Um, one hospital where the first wheelchair tipper in the country was installed. Um, but wheelchair tippers are getting quite advanced now. In, um, on, on one of our sites we have a wheelchair tipper which is portable so it moves around and it's, and it's also foldable so if you're not using it you can fold it away and tuck it in the corner. It also has an addition to it where you can put a bariatric bench into it. So if you have patients who are over the weight limit of your chair, you can use that addition to your, onto your wheelchair tipper, but you can also get um, dental chairs that are, take a higher weight of patient as well. We might have other facilities for patients with physical disabilities, like special pillows, um, to adapt banana boards, um, rotunda transfers. So there's lots of things that we might be able to help, have, we have access to for patients who have limited mobility. Some community dental services also have mobile dental vans um, and that's basically what it says on the tin. It's a van, in the back of it is a full set up of dental surgery including x-rays and some, depending on what the service is they can be taken to care homes for example, to special education needs schools or um, 
in East London, I set up one of these vans to go around to the homeless hostels and soup kitchens and providing care in their, on their turf, which I found much better, and trying to get them to clinic. We also have other ways to help patients manage their treatment who might not be able to cooperate with treatment under local anaesthetic or in the usual way because they have a learning disability or they have dementia or they have dental phobia and, and this includes sedation. We do lots of forms, different forms of sedation depending on what training we've had including inhalation sedation via a nasal hood, um, oral sedation, intranasal sedation which is probably my favourite and um, intravenous sedation. The sort of patients we do sedation on um, might be a bit more complex than, for example, maybe some oral surgery services that do um, sedation for phobics, because we might see patients who are more medically complex or have learning disabilities, and so sedation is a bit different. So we might use more pre-medication, um, we might have to think more outside the box about how they may be able to cooperate and that could be, for example, delivering sedation in the car park before bringing them into the surgery, or um, disguising oral sedation in their favourite drink, or trying to doing a bit of clinical holding to hold their hand still so you can get the cannula in. And we all have appropriate training for that, and it's properly risk assessed. I also spend one day a week, um, well, one morning a week in general in theatre providing general anaesthesia for patients who can't cooperate for dental treatment in any other way. And it's probably my favourite day of the week. But we work with a fantastic team, including anaesthetics in recovery, and really provide whatever treatment that patient needs on the day. Um, and that patient can't cooperate any other way. And um, it's really satisfying. I really enjoy treating patients in the GA. Um, it's a bit different to treating patients, or it's, it's a lot different to treating patients who are awake. You're doing all the treatment in one hit, you have to make often decisions of not even knowing what teeth they have before they're asleep because you can't get a look. And um, so that's why we always work in the team and make joint decisions. And um, we generally take quite a lot of teeth out, do lots of fillings and scaling, for example. And we're really lucky in our service that if a patient who is, has a learning disability comes through, um, our learning disability nurse helps coordinate other care that that patient might need while they're asleep. So for example, we, rut we routinely take blood tests on our learning disability patients in the GA because they generally don't cooperate enough when they're awake and this is an opportunistic moment while they're asleep for their dental treatment. Why don't we take their bloods? And we've done things from cutting toenails to um, ECGs to even um, recently a lady had her coil replaced. So top to toe surgery, proper holistic care for our patients. Um, it does take a bit more planning, but it's really, really satisfying to know that's what's in the patient's best interest. As well as pharmacological ways of managing patients, we also do lots of behavior, we have behaviour management techniques and um, other means to help patients cooperate with treatment. And that could be um, help from our psychology team who do CBT for our dental phobics, acupuncture for patients who've got hypersensitive gag reflexes, or even hypnotherapy for people with anxieties. So overall, special care dentistry is a full MDT. We do whatever that patient needs, um, whether they're asleep or awake. And so it generally means that we have to be very good generalists as well as specialists in these patients. And um, so that's why I really enjoy the field of special care dentistry because I do whatever treatment that patient needs. And um, also means that we often need to get um, input from other medical and dental specialties. So most recently, um, one of our departments is te team up, teaming up with our restorative team for our more complex patients for implant planning, for um, intraoral scanning for our gaggers or patients with learning disabilities, or for more former rehabs in some of our um, patients who've got complex medical problems like um, syndromes and things like that. I think in terms of if you're interested in special care or you want to know what's appropriate and what your patients will experience if you refer them on, is connect with your local service. They will be friendly, they will might even let you shadow, um, but the, the important thing is to have that connection and that network. And, and, and having that good communication is always better if you know where you're sending your patients. If you're interested more in special care, there are plenty of good CPD and societies that you could join. Um, SARD, of course, is a well-known sedation trainer and they have their annual symposium. The British Society of Disability and Oral Health is a very good society that I recommend as well with an associated journal attached to it. 
British Society of Gerodontology as well. It's also very good if you work with lots of older patients, um, then that is a good society to join and they have good CPD events as well. So that is the end of my three day takeover of 90 Days Dental about special care dentistry. I really hope you've enjoyed it and learned something. Please feel free to reach out to me on social media if you have any questions you want to connect. Please check out my blog. There's plenty of good resources on there. Well, I hope they're good um, for you to read if you want to find out more or any spe anything specifically you want to learn about you, any special care patients. Thank you, Natalie. That was brilliant. And it's been a really great three-parter. We're going to pause 90 Day Dental at this stage. We're not going to complete it right now. We've got so much going on in the dental world. We need to get back to a sense of normality. And we've, a lot of us, especially the speakers, have a lot of preparation to do over the next couple of weeks. So we will be coming back to complete the remaining topics. And there is a lot of great topics still coming up later on in the series. So give us a break for a few weeks and we will be back to finish it all off. Good luck to everyone that's returning to work tomorrow or next week or the week after, whenever that may be. Stay safe, stay healthy and ultimately your patients can't wait to see you all. Take care.